Summary of the Painted Door by Sinclair Ross There is a storm coming up in the middle of winter on the Canadian prairies. A farmer named John tells his wife and that he is going to check on his old father before the storm. Both ways will be five miles long and full of steep hills and deep snow. And doesn't want him to go. She has to take care of the animals by herself, and she's afraid for his safety. John tells him he has to leave in a kind but strong way. He offers to stop by their friend Stephen's house on his way and tell Stephen to come hang out with Anne. When he gets back in the evening, he will join them for dinner and a game of cards. And Anne and John have been married for seven years. John is tall, strong, and quiet. He loves his lovely, active wife very much and wants to give her everything she could ever want. He works all the time and won't hire someone to help him so they can pay off the farm's debt, move to a bigger house, and buy in some nice clothes. And loves her husband, but life on their farm makes her bored and lonely. Her husband and she are going to have to wait a long time to pay off their mortgage, and she hopes they could enjoy their youth and have fun together. She feels stuck because she doesn't appreciate all that John does for her and starts to clean up the house for Stephen's visit after John leaves. The weather outside quickly proves to be just as rough and dangerous as she thought it would be. While painting the bedroom door, and tries not to think about how upset she is that she is alone at home. Given how bad the storm looks, she starts to question whether John will really come back that night. Stephen shows up in the afternoon, and and is completely shocked by his appearance. He's someone she's known almost as long as she's known John, but tonight feels different. He's good-looking and chatty, and she thinks he's everything she doesn't like about her husband. Stephen feeds the animals, and then everyone sits down to eat and play cards. Stephen is adamant that John will stay the night with his dad instead of coming back to join them, but Anne doesn't agree. Her words make it sound like John has never been away from her during a storm, but it's not clear if she's trying to persuade Stephen or herself. Things are getting worse between them, and it's clear that Stephen wants to sleep with Anne. And is also open to the idea. And decides that John will be gone all night and sleeps with Stephen, but they never say out loud what their plans are. And stays up all night feeling restless and guilty while Stephen sleeps soundly. She dreams that she sees John, but when she wakes up, it's just the fire's shadow and knows that she loves John and would never cheat on him again, even though Stephen is beautiful. She recommits herself to their marriage in silence, thankful for the life they share. John's body is found frozen to death just outside the house the next morning. The people next door think that the wind must have made him lose his way and he ended up walking past their house and getting caught in a snowdrift. And says she always knew he would get home, even when it was snowing which makes everyone surprised that he even tried to walk home. And sees a small mark of the white paint she used to paint the bedroom door on one of his hands when she is left by herself with his body. About the author. Sinclair Ross was born and raised in a small town in Saskatchewan, Canada. His parents split up when he was young, and he lived with his mother on several farms until he quit school at 16 and got a job at a bank. Ross worked for the same bank for more than 30 years, even when he moved to Winnipeg and then to Montreal, which is known for its many restaurants and shops. He also served in London for four years during World War II. The book As For Me and My House, which came out in 1941, is his most famous work. Even though that piece didn't get much attention at first, Ross had already won a number of awards for his short stories, and by the mid-1950s, he was generally seen as a major Canadian fiction writer. People love his work because it shows how real life is in small Canadian towns in a deep and powerful way. Ross died in Vancouver, Canada, at the age of 88. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.